Hello, everyone. Welcome to the UQ Oshner Virtual Open House. Thank you for joining us today. And also thank you for joining us for this presentation, Life After Graduation. So my name is Super Ross, and I am the Director of Enrollment Management. I'm located in New Orleans, Louisiana. But today, our guest and presenter is coming to us from Asheville. And it is an alum, graduated in 2012, Dr. Ross Huffman a pulmonologist. So Dr. Huffman, are you ready to start your presentation? Yes, thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Uh, well, good evening or good morning, everyone, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm an, a 2012 graduate of the UQ Oxner uh, program, which is to say a member of the inaugural class. There were nine of us that year. And uh, I've been asked to speak a little bit about uh, what my journey was like, and especially what the journey has been like since I finished medical school in my training, which was 2019 after uh, medical school, residency, and uh, fellowship. Uh, I'm originally from Norfolk, Virginia. And when I went to the University of Virginia for undergrad, I had no interest in becoming a health professional of any type whatsoever. My father was a surgeon and I had watched all those years while he worked very hard, worked weekends, worked nights. My uh, best friend's father was a stockbroker and he was off weekends. He played golf. I thought that looked pretty good. So I decided to become a businessman. But uh, after a couple years working for an investment firm, I realized that I really had no passion there. I uh, went traveling for a little while. I got to see a bit of the world. And that's when I realized that uh, a role in the health professions was uh, most interesting to me. I also wanted to do humanitarian medicine, which I've had the chance to do uh, along uh, the path. Um, in terms of how I found out about the UQ Oxner program, I was told by my pre-medical advisor. It's uh, actually funny. Uh, I took the MCAT and then had about two months with nothing to do. So I returned to Australia, a country I'd already spent almost a year of my life in just traveling, uh, to go to the Northern Territory to camp for about a month overall. And while I was there, I sent a postcard to my pre-medical advisor thanking her for her guidance and all the advice she'd given me along the way, applying to medical school in the States. And when I got back, she let me know that she had uh, attended a presentation about this new program that was going to be half Australia, half New Orleans, and that I should check it out. So I went to the web page and um, uh, the rest is sort of history. I had um, interviews in Virginia, my home state, but really wasn't very excited uh, about the experiences I'd had during those interviews. Um, and meanwhile, there was this brand new um, hybrid intrepid new program that, uh, well, I understood immediately would give me uh, two years in Australia, a country that I already loved, and then two years in New Orleans. So I signed up and I think all of us that signed up in that first year um, understood that we were taking a, a risk, that uh, there was no telling how the program was going to turn out and how we were going to turn out. Um, I will say that every year that goes by, I appreciate more and more the experience that I had, and I see more and more uh, the uh, the gifts and the skills that came of that. Uh, and I'm happy to talk a little bit more about that in uh, uh, later on, but uh, that's how I came to uh, find the program. I uh, So I did two years in Brisbane and then uh, two years uh, at the Oxner Clinical School in uh, on Jefferson Highway, the main campus of Oxner. Um, and I had such a great experience at Oxner that I was very happy to stay for my residency. I did internal medicine between uh, starting in 2013, finishing in 2016. I then um, joined the LSU Louisiana State University fellowship program in pulmonary and critical care medicine. 
um, the LSU fellowship program is um, uh, certainly an LSU program in name, um, but about two thirds of the time in that fellowship program is spent at Oxner hospitals, not just the main campus, which has the largest and busiest ICU, uh, but also Oxner Baptist, Oxner Kenner, uh, and then University Medical Center downtown is uh, generally considered a, an LSU in Tulane uh, hospital. So my fellowship was spent at four different hospitals, all within about 25 minutes drive of each other in New Orleans. Um, and it was a fantastic program. I graduated fellowship in 2019 and started uh, work as an attending physician or a consultant, as the Australians would say, um, in um, early 2020 after my wife finished uh, uh, her MPH at Tulane. We stayed for an extra few months uh, for, so she could finish. And uh, I'm just about to hit two years with a private practice in Asheville, North Carolina. There were none of us. Uh, the, the next uh, uh, thing I'd like to speak to is what happened to the other uh, classmates of mine who graduated in 2012. Um, a great many good things in general. I will say that we started with 14 in 2009 and we graduated nine. Um, a little bit of attrition, but there were two of those who fell in love with Australians and decided to stay in Australia. And then there was one who I think went on to do a research degree so really, um, everyone who signed up and uh, did their hard work, did their part, made it through. The support uh, that we got from the program was top notch. And especially over uh, the evolution of the program, I think that the advice, the support, the resources that are offered are excellent and uh, probably more than what you need to succeed. Of course, it depends on what um, your goal is and what success means to you. Um, the program was founded as part of an initiative by the state of Louisiana uh, to uh, have a source of more primary care physicians, um, specialties like family practice, internal medicine, OBGYN, uh, general surgery, pediatrics. And so, uh, like really most American medical schools, both uh, MD programs and DO programs, um, I think the, the well, I, I can't say as to a percentage, but uh, certainly a great number of graduates have gone into the primary care specialties. But if you visit the uh, UQ Oxner website, you'll see that uh, graduates have matched into, I'm fairly certain, um, every type of residency program there is straight up to the most competitive like orthopedics, ophthalmology, dermatology, interventional radiology. I don't know if there's any specialty that we haven't matched into. My colleagues from 2012, uh, one became a, a family practice physician in Denver. Another became an OBGYN in Oregon, uh, just outside of Portland. Another became a pulmonary uh, medicine and rehabilitation doctor in Atlanta. One is, uh, a uh, hematologist oncologist in Houston. One is a hepatologist who trained at Stanford. Uh, I think he's actually in a fully dedicated GI fellowship now in Detroit. Another became a general surgeon uh, in Detroit, or at least that's where he trained. And uh, we have one more cardiologist who I think is in upstate New York. We have one pathologist who I think is uh, back in New Orleans who trained in Hawaii. So even in that first class, there was uh, a great variety of interests, a great variety of, of where we matched. And certainly, I think uh, all of those who went into internal medicine went on to do um, specialty fellowships later on. I will say that the greatest success, it seems to me, of the program has been um, that it's... Uh, graduates have done the talking for it in terms of the quality of the program and the types of doctors it produces. In other words, um, I think everywhere that graduates have matched has been uh, pleased enough, impressed enough perhaps, 
with uh, the residents they've gotten that they've been open to taking more in the future. I know of several programs that have taken, you know, at least several, if not more than a half a dozen uh, of our graduates. And as a result, I think the reputation of the program has grown significantly. When I was about to graduate from medical school and I was doing residency interviews, uh, places like Chicago, back in Virginia, my home state, um, around Louisiana, um, it was sort of nice because everybody was uh, tickled by the idea of um, a program that was a hybrid between Australia and, uh, and New Orleans. And the commonest question I got was, what was it like living two years in Australia? And I get asked about surfing and poisonous snakes and frogs and things like that. Um, but it was a bit of a drag in that uh, I could tell that this was all a bit of a, an oddity to them and something curious. Uh, I can certainly say at this point that uh, the reputation of the program has grown in such a way that uh, I think the program is known nationwide. Certainly around Louisiana, uh, by the time I left New Orleans a couple years ago, our graduates were considered on par with graduates of the LSU and Tulane um, medical schools. Uh, I do think that they were uh, virtually as competitive for residency spots. And I think a lot of the old way of thinking, which is that uh, international medical graduates are never on par with domestic medical graduates. I think a lot of that had gone away. And again, um, most of all due to the performance uh, on the job of our graduates, uh, they were able to impress and uh, pave the way for others to come. So to the extent that, uh, that my class and, and that I was able to help with that, it really has been an honor. Um, another thing I've been asked to address is how I chose my specialty. Well, I, I think this is an important point to make. Um, a great many students who matriculate to medical school will change their minds about what they want to practice before they finish. And not all, there are some who are uh, very clear and very singular in their focus, um, but a great many will change. And I think of the nine of us who graduated in my year, um, at least half of us changed what we wanted to do. And that'll be based on uh, things like your experience in your clerkships. Um, I thought, for example, that I wanted to do a surgical specialty. And what I learned was that uh, my sort of culture of people was much more um, uh, the internal medicine route. When I rotated in the intensive care unit at Oxford Main Campus, I uh, observed the attending physicians there and realized very quickly that one, they were probably the smartest doctors in the hospital, at least by my estimate. Uh, two, they were also the most humanistic. So they really were practicing cutting edge medicine in a very intense and challenging, meaningful setting, but also connecting with patients and their families on um, uh, a deep level out of necessity. And I just thought that that constellation of challenges and, and rewards was um, the best thing that I've found. So quite late in, uh, in medical school, my fourth year, I switched gears and decided to go the internal medicine route with an eye towards uh, eventually becoming a, a critical care doctor. And uh, it's been wonderful how things have worked out. I've been very happy. In terms of <clears throat> What has been different for me as a graduate of the, the UQ Oxford program, I will um, very confidently tell you that I think you get a more well-rounded experience in medical school doing it this way. What I discovered when I got to Australia is that they were not so focused in years one and two on the basic sciences. They do cover it. Uh, they don't cover uh, wrote basic science for the purpose of uh, the old USMLE exams, uh, United States Medical Licensing exams. Those have all changed in the last 10 years, so many of you will not have to take those or take all of them at least. Um, but for many American uh, or, or students who attend med American medical schools, those first two years are spent in a library with very little clinical experience, very little patient contact, 
I think across the board, many medical schools have tried to improve that, but they're really starting from a, a position of entrenched basic sciences and, and pathology uh, education. In Brisbane, uh, from virtually the first week, we had patient contact, we had uh, standardized patients, we had clinical skills training, both physical exam, history taking, how to interview a patient, uh, how to respond to cues uh, so that you know that you're actually connecting with the patient and you can get the information that you need to provide the care that you want to, uh, or perhaps the, the care that the patient needs. Um, I thought that was invaluable. And certainly when we came, uh, you know, when we had to take the USMLE exams, uh, we were at a, a bit, bit of a disadvantage just for the fact that um, we had not had the rote basic sciences uh, training. But I'll certainly say, you know, 10 years out that that was really an advantage that just needed some more time to play out. Um, we did have to buckle down and do extra study for the USMLE exams. The uh, program provided, again, I think more resources than we even needed to help us succeed there. And it's really a partnership between you and the program. Um, so we were able to get through that. And those of us that wanted very high scores and generally were generally were able to get those. Those of us that were not quite as, as uh, uh, focused on hitting home runs on the USMLE exams, we all in the end passed. Um, and I don't know anyone who was impeded um, in their path to medicine by the exams um, the way it was originally uh, feared. Uh, I think that that's uh, certainly an obstacle, but one that's been overcome time and time again. And bear in mind, I'm talking about 2012 when we had nine graduates. These days, uh, I, I don't know what the exact number is, but you know, over 100 graduates a year or thereabouts, um, these are all folks who have managed to do well on the exams and, uh, and get into the American medical system, residency system. So very reasonable to have some concern about um, the, um, you know, the relevance that it has being an international medical graduate. But I really would, uh, would sort of, you know, suggest that you not uh, let that sway your decision. This is an excellent program. I would certainly argue that UQ's School of Medicine is a better school than a great many American schools. And I think this program combines uh, tremendous things from two different countries. Um, so for me, it's been nothing but enriching, especially in the long term. Sue, I, I may uh, open it up and, and see what questions there are and, and uh, what other topics people are interested in. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hoffman, very much. Well, chat room, it's time for questions. Please enter your questions into the chat room now and I'm sure. Okay, so we have, what kind of person do you think would do well in this program? I don't know that there's any difference between someone who wants to be, become a doctor coming through this program and someone who might attend an American medical school or uh, another school abroad, whether that might be the Caribbean or Israel or any of the others, Mexico. Um, somebody who wants to become a health professional, a doctor, um, who is willing to put in the hard work. Um, and I, I suppose to, to recognize the obvious, to take uh, some risk in traveling to another country, there's certainly uh, an adjustment that you have to make culturally uh, in Australia. I think a great many of our students have uh, a fantastic time getting there and in the times that you have to socialize and enjoy the uh, the activities that you can in Queensland, uh, it's a fantastic time. But it is medical school, and you'll be busy a lot. And um, because you'll be making the trip over the Pacific back to America for year three, um, there will be you know some extra work that you have to do for licensing exams and things like that. But I would encourage you to to uh, see that the trail has been blazed and that there's going to be no reinventing the wheel. There's no state in the United States that we haven't matched into and uh, succeeded in going to. So um, if you're willing to do the work, 
and take some risk. Uh, and certainly if you have an interest in Australia, uh, seeing what um, a nationalized healthcare type system uh, provides to its patients, then uh, this is a, a great path. Okay, thank you. I definitely agree that it'd be someone with a sense of adventure because you're far away from home. It's not easy to get back. So having that kind of resiliency and interest in adventure would be for uh, someone. Uh, well, I see Johnson's in our chat room. It's good to see you here. Hello. Uh, he said, what is one thing that you miss about being in Brisbane and being back in the U.S.? My family, my friends. Medical school is a, <clears throat> a time full of uh, challenges, stress, pressure. Um, and being away from your network matters. I think these days with social media and all the different ways we have to connect with people, um, you know, that can be overcome. But, um, you know, this isn't like going to medical school in your hometown or your home state. You can't necessarily escape for a weekend and, and go home and uh, uh, rejoin your friends. On the flip side, when you get to Brisbane, you'll discover that uh, everyone else is in the same boat. And most people can't uh, afford in terms of money or time to travel back and forth very much. So everybody bands together. And that's where there's a lot of bonding. There's a lot of relationships that are forged that I think will last a lifetime. Um, so yeah, there were things to miss, but uh, largely we enjoyed ourselves. And uh, once we got in the, the groove of medical school, we just kept going. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan, good to see that you joined the session. Thank you for coming. Um, Jonathan says, can you explain what extra work graduates of this program need to do to practice in the U.S. compared to students who attend domestic medical schools? What kind of extra work? That's a great question. And I, I think if you guys are going to uh, sign on to the program, you need to be clear about that. Um, these days, I don't think it's a tremendous amount of extra work. I think it was for us because we were the first class or first, you know, few classes where um, the trail was still being blazed. So there were a lot of things that needed to be understood, uh, addressed, strategized. Um, once you match into a residency in the United States, you basically will be washed back into the American medical system. And after that, I mean, I, I think when I interviewed for fellowship, I was almost never asked where I went to medical school. I was asked where I did residency, which to them was the defining training. Um, and if the UQ Oxford thing came up in my uh, fellowship interviews, um, it was mostly a... Uh, I don't know, sort of an interesting uh, part of my resume as opposed to anything that had determined the doctor that I was becoming. So in terms of the extra work, it's basically getting yourself into an American residency. Um, I don't know exactly what your class may encounter in terms of the United States medical licensing exams, the USMLEs. For us, we had to take three of them, two of them during medical school. That was the bulk of the work. And now those are, I think one or two of them has gone away. Uh, I'm sure the, the program can provide uh, updated information on that. Those were major hurdles, especially since the UQ curriculum was not specifically designed to those things. My understanding is if you go to a Caribbean school, they teach to the exams for the first couple of years. And while that will certainly help with the exams, it's not necessarily going to make you a better doctor because uh, being a good doctor has nothing to do with answering multiple choice questions correctly for seven and eight hours at a stretch. So in terms of extra work, uh, getting through the medical licensing, there are some states, and I think California has always been the most difficult, where it takes a little bit of extra work if you're going to apply for a residency there. So there's some extra um, application materials. Again, I wouldn't see all that as too daunting because the program has matched uh, graduates into residencies in California a great many times. And um, uh, the extra work is really something that you can absolutely surmount and uh, um, don't need to be concerned about in signing up for the program. Thank you. Well, Mahan wants to thank you for participating and also ask your thoughts on the combined MD-PhD. 
Well, that is something that came along a little bit after my time. Um, I knew, I think, three students when I was a resident who went for the program, and I think that they all uh, really enjoyed it and really uh, appreciated what they, um, the, the choice that they made. Um, but I, I really can't speak to the program. I didn't do it myself. And um, I think it was in its nascent stages when I was coming through. I was also, uh, uh, as you could tell from the story I told, a non-traditional student. I was already in my uh, late 20s by the time I started medical school and I was quite um, uh, eager to move on with my career. So, uh, but I, my understanding is it's a great program. And certainly uh, as far as research goes, UQ is a, a powerhouse. Uh, so I think you'd have a great many opportunities. Okay, and Jabal would like to know regarding USMLE, how does UQ help prepare its students to perform well on this exam? Is it through coursework or through a USMLE focused support session? Um, <clears throat> for our class, and this is old information at this point, uh, they provided what we asked them for. And I, I'm not saying that you'll be able to sort of name your item and, and, and you know, get every little thing. But they provided um, question banks, online question banks, which I think are the most valuable resource. Uh, they provided stipends for review books, which I think are becoming a bit outdated at this point. I always thought preparing for those exams that what you really need to do is sit down with a book and uh, learn as much as you could. In fact, it's all about answering questions correctly. So the more you practice questions, the better you do. Um, so the question banks were the main thing. Uh, there are review courses that uh, I think uh, are available. Um, and um, certainly setting uh, aside some time for uh, uh, what the Australian call, uh, Australians call tutorials or toots. Uh, that's a big thing. We, we started tutorials when we were in Brisbane and it was generally once a week for two to three hours, just USMLE material. Um, taught in relatively small groups. And I would uh, urge you to uh, check in with the program about what the updates are, because it's been quite a, quite some time since I was a student. I graduated yeah. in 2012. Sure, but, I can um, help you with that. Um, yes. Actually, there, there is a dedicated course in your second year, a whole course dedicated to you passing this exam, along with uh, subscriptions, online subscriptions, question bank, practice exams. So there's very much that's involved with that. I'll point out that we have two minutes left and we do have a few questions in the chat room. So let me take a look at those. Ali said, where were you able to get involved in, were you able to get involved in the local community while living in Brisbane? If so, how? There was nothing that I undertook personally. I was busy uh, between studying for the UQ curriculum and preparing for USMLEs. I also like playing soccer. And then the weather in Brisbane is fantastic. It is hot and humid a lot. That never bothered me. So I tried to get outside when I could. Um, there are, they do have clinical um, uh, sort of experience uh, sessions that you'll do. Um, but in terms of the community itself, uh, I'm sure, I mean, Australia is a, a free country that ultimately is very similar to our own. I'm sure that there'd be opportunities there. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Um, for your class, did those who match match into one of their top three ranked residency programs? It was a mix. We had several who did, who got the specialty they wanted and the program they wanted. We had several who did not. Um, we had one who did not match in orthopedics. We had one who, um, I'm trying to remember what he applied to. I think he wanted radiology and that year he didn't get it. Um, so it was a mix. Uh, I got the, the specialty and the program that I wanted. Okay, well, it brings us to the end of our presentation. It looks like our time's up. So I definitely wanna thank you, Dr. Ross Hoffman for joining us and giving us this perspective of being in the inaugural graduation class. And uh, we really appreciate your insight and thank you for being here. 
thank you for having me and putting up with uh, the cold that I've got. I appreciate it. Good luck to everyone. Yes, thank you so much.